Ah, uh, what a lovely day out in the fields. It would be such a shame if this was the worst experience in my miserable little life. Cuphead, a beautiful little game put together with the thought pattern of Imagine Steamboat Willie plunged to the depths of hell, engulfed in flames, and he wants to kill you. This absolute piece of game puts you in the body of Cuphead or his younger twin brother Mugman and forces you to question your life choices as you smash your head against a brick wall repeatedly whilst taking on over 20 gruelling boss battles. In this process there are a number of challenging achievements for you to unlock, but the rarest of them all are put on a show and beat the devil at his own game. But what if we tried to do both? What if we tried to beat the whole of Cuphead, defeating every boss, getting only S ranks? Well, today's the day, as we will be going for the, as ChatGPT called it, Mr. Perfection achievement. Jesus, I can't believe that stupid AI has done me dirty with that cringe ass name. Oh well, we're going with it, Mr. Perfect, here we go. As usual, these games start out with a nice and easy boss battle for you to take on to settle your nerves and give you a false sense of security. Uh, right shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's 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 not a great start. <laughs> okay, starting off the easiest battle in the game with an instant loss, or two, is not great, but on the third attempt, we managed to beat up some vegetables and pick up the first S rank of the game. Boom. Getting into boss battle number two, let's go over the requirements for getting an S rank. Our first requirement is time, and you've got about two minutes to take down each boss before your score is affected. Up next is HP, and as you can see we start each battle with 3 HP and you need to finish each battle with 3 HP to get the S rank, taking no damage. You need 3 parries, these things, and you need to use 6 super meters, which are extra damage moves which you build up by dealing damage to enemies, which can be seen in the bottom left corner. If we do not meet these requirements by even one on one of the scores, we'll drop down to an A and we have to retry the entire boss battle adding to our counter of attempts, and would you believe that all of this was to distract you from the fact that I took five attempts to take out the easiest boss in the game. It's been a while, give me a break. And I'm on expert, that is S rank. Let's go, come on. Hildeberg, say my name, is the first plane battle of the game and is plain bullshit. This boss battle is split into four different stages, which Funnily enough, it's the same number of levels of hell that you go through when in this battle. There's anger. That's the finish line. He's dead. What do you mean? It's literally on the point. Are you having me on? Greed. Oh, I shouldn't have... Why did I go for the parry? It was greedy. Oh my god, I didn't need it. I should have just went for the kill and dodged the UFO. Violence. Find time to go. Oh, fuck you, you fat bitch. And lust. Oh, oh baby, I'm gonna come. However, despite literally going through hell, after what felt like three years of my life, we managed to take down Hilda and pick up the next S rank of the run. Let's go, baby, S rank, come on. After making a mountain out of that molehill, duh, we have only scraped the tip of the ice, Berg. <laughs> Cagney Carnation puts me into what I can only imagine a weekend at Woodstock would feel like, and much like Woodstock, this would only get three attempts before we never have to think about this again, as we very quickly pick up the next win of the challenge. Up next is the final battle of Area 1, and brings us against Ribeye in Crocs. Excuse me? They're called Ribby and Crocs. Like the frog sounds. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to delete the VOD. We can't have this getting out. Whilst you thought seeing a slab of meat shoved into a pair of crocs with the meat coming through the holes that reminded you of that time when you were five and you fed your neighbour's hamster through your Play-Doh machine was going to be the most horrifying thing you saw today, you're in for a treat, as you now get to watch a grown man scream at an animated cup and two animated frogs whilst getting treated like Evander Holyfield in a boxing match against Mike Tyson. I, I'm fuming. Excuse what? Shoots! Cuphead, you fat gimp. You milk-filled douchebag. Can, can, can my shots go somewhere? Oh, you, you are the worst piece of boss I've ever seen in my life. What, what can I do? I parry and it just throws me up in the air and then I get Prime Ronaldo volleyed out of nowhere by a flying goat. I don't even know what it is. Oh, they're probably flies because frogs eat flies. You know what? Yeah, that, that, that's fair. I'm an idiot. Suck my asshole, buddy. Absolutely 
raked, you piece of... And to add fuel to my existing fire with this battle, we were cock-teased with two potential S-ranks before we finally get to I'm attempt 52. Pissed. And what can I say about attempt 52? It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. That's right. Attempt 52 was a thing of beauty. Within the first 30 seconds, we'd collected all three parries and moved on to the second section of the battle, where we proceed to dodge glittery balls like a straight man in a gay bar who's just there to hang out with his friends. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that, Jamie. With my asshole somehow slightly more clenched than it was when driving home from Taco Bell after eating my own body weight in beefy five-layer burritos, followed by enough laxatives to kill a sorority, we make it to stage three, where my crippling gambling addiction comes back to haunt me. But having already lost my home, wife and kids to gambling, I wasn't losing the most important thing of my life. This run. So we double down, clap some cheeks, and finally complete Area 1. Show me that S. Show me it. It's cool! Fuck cracked, baby! Area 2 has potentially the hardest boss battles in the game. Starting off with Baroness von Bonbon, and unlike 50 Cent who will take you to the candy shop and let you lick the lollipop, this woman takes that lollipop and forcefully throat fucks you with it until you die. And for any of you thinking, yo, that, that's, that's kind of hot. No, it isn't. You don't want a piece of her. She's the devil's like little floozy that he shags when he's got nothing better to do. And let me tell you, this floozy is a doozy, as not only does she have her enticing little minions come for you, she even tries to give you the worst head of your life and suck Cuphead's straw dry. <laughs> you f You're the worst f person I've ever seen in my life, you little cupcake f Oh, this has to be the last one, doesn't it? I, I, I can't, I can't kill that little cupcake What is he doing? He just split, jumps into the ground. What can I do against that? Oh, you absolute little f stain muffin douchebag. Oh my god, this muffin man. The muffin man! Having been way too angry at a muffin than any man has a good reason to be, and using more expletives than at the end of Deadpool and Wolverine, we finally get a run where we manage to take out Vanellope Von Schweetz and pick up the first S rank of Area 2. Let's go! Boss 2 takes me to Beppy, and let me tell you, there's only one thing I hate more than sexy lollipop ladies. Fucking clowns. What I originally thought was going to be a nice day out at the circus turned out to be one of the most awful experiences of my life, as this John Wayne Gacy copycat beat me so hard I developed a stutter. Oh, I, 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 uh... t -t Today, Junior? But maybe Adam Sandler was right. Maybe I had to take a leaf out of his book and think to myself, You can do it! Cut his fucking head off! And that's exactly what I'm going to do. It takes a lot of tries and it takes a lot of deaths, but none of these deaths were in vain. Every time we learnt something that we carried through to the next attempt until finally, we get to attempt 45. Which in hindsight I know doesn't sound like a lot, but when you've done the same 25 seconds of a boss battle 45 times, your brain very quickly shrivels up. This starts off with us absolutely peppering Beppy as he succumbs to minor injuries from multiple car crashes. From there, Beppy starts to show off a clown's most common skill of luring chill making balloon animals. Stage 3, Beppy tries to manipulate me into not brutally murdering him by using a donkey as a method of defence. Well, chokes on you, buddy, because I eat ass for breakfast. The final stage is the worst of all, and it's all because of these guys. These maniacal little penguin bastards are the worst thing to come out of penguins since Happy Feet, which is why I was happy to see them get ran over by a train, and with them out of the way, we defeat Beppy and pick up the next S rank. <laughs> In need of a mental reset after Beppy, we head over to Jimmy the Great, who is a like-to-like ripoff of Aladdin, except instead of a healthy tan, he has irreversible skin damage and a high likelihood of melanoma. He does keep the flying carpet, though. Unlike Aladdin, who was threatened with having his right arm chopped off, Jimmy's punishment is literal death, and fortunately for me, that came around surprisingly quickly. The next two battles are what I considered, getting into this challenge, were going to be the hardest battles of the game. These are Grim Matchstick and Wally Warbles. Grim Matchstick is a green dragon, just like Elliot from the 1977 blunder that was Pete's Dragon. Honestly, this film sucked balls, and you'd think it would get better when they remade it, but nope, this was ass as well. Just as ass as this battle, in fact. 
In this battle, you are shoved in a conveyor belt, being continuously pulled towards a ravenous carnivore, intent on devouring your internal organs. Once you get to stage 2, not only do you have to worry about the homicidal dragon, but also fireballs with the telepathic abilities of David Blaine. Oh! And finally in stage 3, where this dragon learns the ability of mitosis as his singular head splits into three, one of which can turn into a flamethrower because why not, anything to make you hate this battle even more. Fortunately, we have access to the lobber, which has a massive damage output, so we managed to take out the dragon easier than expected. Not much easier, but like a little bit, which makes me feel a bit better getting into Wally. Wally is the next plane battle of the game, and as he's a bird it sort of makes sense. Although I'm not quite sure what breed of bird. I've narrowed it down to an American breed because he has a gun. Um, I like that 9mm and a box of bullets, please. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's that's heavy. <laughs> this feels like a... Like an 11 millimeter, am I right? <laughs> and funnily enough, the problem I had with this battle was my lack of guns. But wait a minute. I thought guns were bad. Pulse. We gloss over the fact that I watch a video on how to do this battle, pick up some aerial bombs, and get the next S rank within the next four attempts. With Wally wiped off the face of the earth, we've taken out 10 of 19 total bosses and find ourselves getting into World 3, starting with Rumor Honeybottoms. Who? <gasps> Rumor Honeybottoms is a queen bee, and no, not, not the good one. She's a strong, independent woman who don't need no man, except this man, who she sends out almost instantly. This battle was potentially my least favourite battle of the game. Not because it was difficult or anything, but strictly because of the moaning noise I would get in my ear every time I had to restart. Hey. But unlucky for her, rumour has it I always finish when my honey bottom moans in my ear. We start off by taking out her hunk of a side piece. It turns out we don't all like a man in uniform. With the police officer out the way, we start with what I can only describe as assault with a deadly weapon and an intent to harm as we begin shooting this bee in the face, bringing us to the final stage of the battle. Which is when I start to question myself. I is what I'm doing wrong? Maybe I should attempt to heal the bee. So I did some research. What do the World Wildlife Fund say about this? Fair enough. Come on! Captain Brinybeard is essentially a ripoff of Captain Blackbeard, the pirate from the 1700s, as he's, you know, a pirate and has a black beard. Didn't ask. Well, that was just fucking rude. What I didn't realise at the time of recording is that my camera manages to completely block the entire boss battle, just burning this horrific image in my mind of a pirate yanking at his pink octopus, which fortunately is a euphemism. Luckily for me, the captain's nighttime antics were the worst of my problems, as after a few attempts, we managed to get some shots down his mouth and finish off the battle, picking up the next S rank. Up next is Sally Stageplay, who is a theatre actress and one of the better designed characters in Cuphead, because just like theatre girls, no one fucking likes her. This battle follows the natural progression of a visit to the theatre, as you start off thinking, this isn't too bad, and then by the end of it, you realise that this is the worst experience of your life and you can't wait for it to be over. Oh, this is f rigged. Unfortunately for me, that ending didn't come soon enough as I found myself getting absolutely decimated by a woman going through her midlife crisis after just being left at the altar. But eventually, we get an attempt where we get our three parries early on, make it through phase two without being hit by a rat bomb, and defy the natural disasters of phase three. Fortunately, that show must not go on, and we can get out of there and head over to Werner Werman. Werner is a rat who lives in a shed and has weaponized a tin of soup. That That's it. That's the only information I gathered on this guy. I guess he's a war hero of some sort and he has an asshole the size of a beach ball based off the width of these butt plugs on his shelf. Like honestly, have some shame Werner. Similar to his character design, this battle took no time at all and we quickly send him back off to Vietnam. Boom baby! The next boss we need to take on is Dr. Carl and his robot, and from my copious amounts of research I found that this was going to be one of the toughest battles in the game. From a first phase that consists of getting attacked from three different areas with three different AoE attacks, to phase two, which consists of taking out the head of the Iron Giant after the effects of the atomic bomb he sacrificed himself to, to stage three, which is where the developers ran out of ideas and thought, maybe we should use stage two of Wally Warbles but make the user want to die. So they did exactly that and added moving barricades and the projectiles now have curves to them. Yeah, this boss was easy. Honestly, once you have a good tactic for stage one, 
Stage 2 is a breeze, and if you completely ignore Dr. Carl on Stage 3 and just focus on dodging the gems, the passive damage you'll get will win you the battle without too much trouble. Carla Maria, however, easily made up for the two easy boss battles I just had. This was the worst boss battle so far, and the most upsetting thing was I thought this was going to be a breeze. This maniacal siren is the Pied Piper of marine life, and uses his power to turn me into Cedric Diggory from Harry Potter. Oh, sorry, wrong scene. Unlike Cedric, I get the joy of attempting this battle as many times as I need in order to win, and as long as I stay calm and keep focused, that shouldn't be a problem. If I see a ghost, I'm gonna <laughs> you. I'm gonna be back in a second. Um, just, I, I need a minute. I need a minute. I, however, was not staying calm. This mermaid asshole is bringing me to the brink of tears. After over an hour and 55 back-to-back -back attempts, we decide to change our loadout and for the first time in this challenge, use the Heart Charm, which gives us one extra health at the start of the boss, at the cost of a slight damage reduction. This appears to be the decision I should have made at the beginning, as I managed to defeat Carla Maria within the next four attempts, and send her to the bottom of the ocean next to the Ocean Gate submarine. This brings us to the final boss of Inquil Isle 3, the Phantom Express, or as it's better known, the Bone Train. Would you like to ride the Bone Train? Despite this boss taking us out a load of times, not much actually happened. A majority of our deaths came in the early stages from either not being able to hit the eyeballs in stage 1, or from parrying into the skeleton head in stage 2. On our second or third attempt of making it to the final stage, we get the win, and have now defeated every boss in Inkwell Isle 1, 2, and 3, taking us to Inkwell Hell and the final two bosses of the game, starting with liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much, make sure you turn on notifications. King Dice forces you to battle a minimum of three mini-bosses out of a possible nine before you can take them on. Fortunately, these bosses are not random, and you can choose who you want to battle. Going into this, I have predetermined the bosses I want to take on for the easiest route. These are Mr. Wheezy, Pip and Dot, and Pirilouetta. And luckily enough, on the third attempt, all of these bosses gave us an extra heart for taking them on, meaning we could take a possible of six lives into the King Dice final battle. Starting with Mr. Wheezy, we've selected the Smoke Dash Charm, which allows our dash to make us immune to damage. Using this, we can easily dodge the enemies in the centre of the map and take him out before his inevitable lung disease. Pip and Dot don't go quite the same as we pick up some early damage, but we eventually manage to take out those Domin Hoes and get to Pirilouetta. Pirilouetta was easy. Which leads to the battle with King Dice. King Dice throws playing cards at us, but unlucky for him, I'm not playing. Christ, that was cringe. I parry like a professional fencer over his cards and proceed to lay more shots into his face than a professional star taking him out and getting the next S rank of the challenge. This leads us to the devil, the final battle in the game, and what in theory should be the toughest battle in the game. However, this battle was quite the disappointment, just like me to my parents. I found that we were either picking up damage early on in the battle or made it all the way to the final stage and then taking a single hit. So with that information, I pull out the pussy move of using the twin heart charm, which um, does the same thing as the heart charm, but double. We get out of the first area picking up one damage and make it to hell, where we proceed to pepper the devil like he's a well-cooked steak, where we manage to take him out and get the final S rank of the game, completing the challenge. About 2 minute 15, I think. Come on, come on. Let's go! <laughs> Come on, baby, let's go, S rank. Come on. Ooh. This challenge was a lot of fun, and I had a good time recording it, but there is no chance I would recommend you complete this challenge. As you saw, there was no achievement for this, so you may ask, what do I gain from this? You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir.